Hi everyone, I'm Gabriel from Space Laser Studio. How you doing? Welcome to this tutorial. This is the art of Paper Cut Mansion, which is a game we've been developing for like five years and it's finally releasing soon. I've shown this process before, but this is the first time I'm making a proper long tutorial about this technique, apparently called Reverse UV by someone. Uh, so here I have been drawing my uh, paper cut shapes on a real piece of paper and scanned the page with a the scanner, then transferred the image to my texture template in Photoshop. Apply this and rasterize layer. Then I want to change the layer to multiply so I can see through it and adjust it, uh, adjusting the curves to make it darker, to make the ink or the graphite in this case, because it's a pencil, um, to be darker. And after I apply this curve, you can see. Um, it, it looks like I've been drawing on, like right on this piece of paper that I have as a texture. I'm um, just gonna create another layer for color, because we want to add color underneath this um, pencil drawing. And for color I usually select uh, either an oil color or whatever I have in my list, but you can, you can choose whichever you like. Um, usually I go with texture, which is nice, uh, or um, yeah, texture will do. And uh, I want to make this, this is, by the way, this is a fountain. I want to make this fountain look like it's made of stone and it's a bit worn as well. So I'm not, I'm not careful about you know, uh, precision here. I just want to make a rough drawing, roughly colored with patches of color, uh, like if it was a pastel or uh, maybe watercolor or something like that. I don't know what's it called, but yeah, you know what I mean. Right, so um, I want to copy this. Uh, this part of the drawing as well and transfer it to um, you know some other place in this same texture because I want to create um, the the inside probably of this fun time I'm making and and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to copy the whole thing with the color underneath as well no I only need that yep and I'll show you in a minute what I mean because since obviously this part uh, will be in contact with water or with paper water uh, is there a thing like that? is there paper water anywhere in the world? Uh, I don't know but yeah I, I want to create the inside space to be a little bit uh, moldy because obviously it's the part of the wall which is in contact with the water and I just move it there and this it's like these layers so I have everything together uh, yeah so uh, the inside part uh, it's something I'm obviously these two things are columns as well so these are also part of the same wall. Uh, obviously from from the drawing you can't really tell at this stage what what they are. Uh, I know because I have you know this pictured in my mind so I know exactly what I'm doing probably uh, but uh, yeah you'll see in a minute it will make sense. So yeah gonna copy this Create another version of these two blocks as well. And this is gonna be the inside of my fancy fountain made of stone and paper. Yeah, 
and I color the inside with you know a moldy green thing just a little bit I want I want to keep a little bit of transparency as well so I go crazy with the greenish thing all over it but um, you know with a little bit of opacity it's blender time so uh, first thing please annihilate that default cube for me and set up your scene and a 3d view and you want to have like two views like this you'll be editing probably and a 3d view so press numpad 7 and 5 uh, and then load background image now take the texture you've been working on and put it as a put it put it as a background over there and you should be able to see it properly if you pressed 7 and 5 on your numpad if not try again and now now it's where the magic happens so what you do is create a plane and literally start the cutting out the pieces of paper so select your vertexes in edit mode and go around your shapes like this with your vertexes like you don't have to be very precise because this is still a paper cut thing we're doing so control R to create new edges and then extrude these parts here to make them much your shape um, and again you don't want to be very precise uh, then select all and abrupt and in your UV uh, texture scene view or whatever it's called you're gonna have this shape over there now you want to load your texture here as well this very same texture that you loaded in your as your background image and make your shape match what you have in the texture and obviously create a new material and your material has to be just a simple material that we call him paper 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 something fountain yeah the, the whole fountain is gonna be made with this very same material we don't need anything else uh, probably for the water we will have a different one but yeah base color you select image texture and load the very same image that you have for your UV and as your background image now when you switch view to texture uh, obviously you'll see your piece of paper this is your first piece of paper and, and you should be proud of yourself if you manage to get to this point uh, and have you know your your very first piece of cut out paper in 3d that's a very good start and now you want to make it uh, thicker so you want to create that cardboard effect and what I do is applying a modifier um, called solidify so you go into modifier solidify and you create some uh, thickness to your object and we want to make it that way um, and also once you apply the modifier where when you're happy with the thick factor you want to apply go to face and select the front faces of your object and you want to add that uh, corrugated effect that you have on your texture so what I do I go to the texture panel and then I flip my UVs trying to make that match my uh, pattern here and then once they match the pattern nicely you want to make sure that the edges are aligned correctly and then move these other bits accordingly to make it look nice it looks nice already um, and Obviously, you want to uh, also select the sides other than the, the front and back of your panel. 
because these are like they, they go one they go um the corrugated edges they go onto one direction it's like if you have several tubes aligned to the same direction so you want to apply also the side part of the texture uh, of the cutout tubes you want to call it tubes i don't know if that's the correct term but yeah and then make sure that every part of your object is um, covered and that's it that's the end result of your first piece of cardboard that it's been cut out from your texture now uh, we can carry on with other objects so you basically repeat this process and um, do the same thing over and over for all of the other objects until you have you know not only the top of your wall but also the sides um, the, the curved side as well so now I am um, changing the the inside of my wall uh, previously I I said that the alternate uh, version of the inside of my wall was the part that would touch the um, the water so it's the moldy part so I've changed the texture to kind of make it match the other um, alternate version of my same wall and start building my wall here uh, with the, the correct faces um, so uh, we got the upper part we got the side part I'm gonna duplicate the side part which already has the the back texture in place the part that touches the water in theory and if you don't know how to duplicate this is control D sorry uh, shift D and then move toward the axis that you want to to align to and then I kind of like to move to deform the the shape a little bit to make it look more like it's uh, not really um, stable it's you know kind of collapsing because still this is cardboard this is paper so it moves it's not it's it's never perfect I kind of uh, squish it on the inside and outside a little bit and yeah when you make um, easy linear uh, shapes this is very easy to do it's just a matter of putting the you know uh, front and back panel but when you make curves like this one you might need the help of some uh, modifiers I usually um, let's say use a combination of a curve modifier or um, proportional editing and, and that will be when you when you go in edit and you click O you press O on your keyboard you go to pro, uh, proportional editing but now I'm just setting up like my first straight wall um, under an empty object so I don't get confused and I can just put everything under um, a, a parent which is a people point here but this is my straight wall and uh, this is my curve wall and for my curve wall I want to create probably a curve uh, I'm going with um, a Bezier curve I'll apply that trying to mimic the shape of my curve here and, and you can do it even manually I mean there's not a lot of um, vertexes in this object here so you can even do it manually but just for the sake of showing what you can do with curves I'm gonna just apply a curve here so yeah the curve goes this way and try to make it match the the, the angle here as much as possible and remember with this kind of workflow you don't wanna 
you don't want to be too precise you want to make it feel a bit crazy so once you create your curve um, you can let's say duplicate your previously made wall and um, make it a new parent clear the parent and obviously I only have like three edges here or maybe five so I'm gonna add more edges with control R and mouse wheel to add more more vertical ones to have a little bit more freedom when I'm bending the object on my curve I'm gonna just put the object here and um, align it to the curve and then apply a curve modifier select my only curve that I have in a scene and move it accordingly now you might notice that my the origin the origin of my curve is not quite correct where I want it to be so in case you want to change the origin you just click on the panel and uh, I usually snap the cursor and yeah change the origin there you go I usually do it in a different version of blender as I um, I like the shortcuts uh, better in that other version but yeah so more or less it has to look like it follows the curve it doesn't again it doesn't need to be precise you can either use the proportional editing to do some some changes this is really entirely up to you probably you know a better method to do this but uh, this is what I just do for this project which is in my opinion uh, faster but probably there is a better method to do this uh, and yeah proportional editing will allow you to kind of bend a little bit further this curve make it feel like you you glued uh, a piece of paper onto another piece of paper yep and uh, and yeah as as soon as you have uh, a nice result here um, you should be fine you should be okay So here I'm creating the uh, the top of the column. I'm gonna make another shape here, and as usual, try matching my shape, adding some vertexes, uh, extruding the final part, and I want to make this column like double the thickness as if I, I've put together two uh, panels, two cardboard panels, one on top of the other and like adapt my UVs to look like they're two panels glued together and do the side and then once I have my column I can attach it to the edge of the two um, straight wall and curved wall so now uh, once you have all of your parts in place so the, the initial setup basic setup of all of your uh, straight walls curved walls and columns you can start duplicating them and uh, create your fountain your full fountain shape accordingly and uh, you know if you want to add any any more details here I'm adding also some columns on the inside of the fountain and still using some curve modifiers uh, this time 
uh, you know, you, you can either do the Bezier um, circle or Bezier curve, uh, whichever you like. And um, I'm, I'm just adding more columns by duplicating them and uh, shifting them uh, around to have uh, some variation. So when you have everything set up and you have your your FBX ready to be exported, export FBX and import into Unity. Uh, if you're making a game or if you're making a fancy animation, whichever whichever thing you're doing, it's your business. But uh, in this case, I'm using uh, this um, this font and for my game. Um, so. I'm creating a little animation as well in this and I show you how um, I got some of the other props I previously made here and these are this kind of uh, paper clam clam is it like uh, one of these typical things you find in a fountain uh, in a classical maybe Roman fountain type of thing and uh, I'm gonna add some statues as well and these statues will uh, kind of uh, pour water inside of the of the fountain um, this these statues that I previously made uh, are gonna be placed on top of my columns and I'm gonna I'm gonna also add a particle effect on, on top of them um, of a, I don't know, of a water flow coming out of these, um, of, coming out of these shapes. Well, it's not gonna be like proper water, right? Uh, this is like confetti water, uh, little squares that will end up in the center of the fountain. So yeah. I'll uh, duplicate the statues, which in this case they are exactly the same, but um, you could ideally create some variations if you have statues that you previously made, maybe with some nice, um, with a nice armature with bones, so you can move them around, you can move the arms a little bit, the head and the, and the legs, but this is not the case. I'm gonna just place them here nicely uh, all pointing towards the center of my on my fountain so once I've done all of them you see these are four different unity prefabs on my uh, hierarchy on the right and I'm gonna sign for uh, particle effects that I have in uh, in store somewhere so here I've added it's a bit of a fast forward but I've added a layer like a plane with the fake water and uh, this is like a, kind of a, a plastic transparent uh, film type of thing so I want to make it look like it's a it's a plastic film with transparency and uh, nice rough uh, reflections also this confetti effect which has exactly the same color as the water. I want to make it look like it's pouring paper water into my paper water panel. <laughs> yep. And then what, once I have set all set up all of my VFX here um, and my particle confetti in a loop. Once they play, they're gonna play all simultaneously like this. And it's gonna look like uh, a nice composition and um, a live fountain. I also uh, want to animate the layer of water in the middle to just tilt a little bit and maybe go up and down. So it, it feels a bit more uh, alive. I'm gonna do that by uh, setting up an animator and maybe um, adding a very easy 
tilting animation here. And the end result is just gonna be like that. Just a random fountain in the middle of the woods. Uh, why not? I'm gonna place this somewhere else. But uh, yeah, you get you get the effect. So this is it, I hope it's not too complicated, because really it's not, it's very easy. Um, if you like the video, uh, please support us, play Papercut Mansion, play the demo and uh, give us a feedback, tell us what you think about an entire world made with this technique. Thank you very much for watching guys, thank you.